Okay, let's start with finishing the nose cone. So in edit mode, I'll select, I'll apply first the mirror and I will duplicate it. That way we don't have to add another one and lose our settings. So I'll select all of the vertices over here and then extrude them and scale them down just like that to match the blueprint. So here for the tip, we'll need to fill this up and I'll just type grid fill. Then I will inset the faces, that way we have a sharper corner. And let's try to slide those around and see if it looks better with just a pure, purely rounded one. Now, I'll scale this down just a tad and add a loop cut here to tighten the junction, like so. Actually, maybe we can even just bevel that. Perfect. Okay, so this episode will serve as an introduction to kind of how to use the base mesh and panel cutting and stuff like that. So after we're done uh, tweaking a few little details, we'll get to that. You see it's very simple and this is where this technique really shines and starts to make sense. So like I said, there are a few tweaks that I want to, to do before, mostly when it comes to the surface quality of our mesh. So here I'll move them back, even if the cockpit will go in this space, just because I want to have a bit more um, surface area for when we do the cockpit and the area around. Perfect, now we shouldn't forget to delete one half of the mesh and zoom in on the nose cone just to make sure that you don't delete vertices from the other half. Like that. Yeah, it's better if you do it in wireframe. That way you can only, you only have to do it once. Now here we may have to recreate some faces, but it's not a big issue. What we can do is just select those vertices, delete them, and then we'll reface them. Let's turn back on the visibility of our mirror modifier. And then I'll select the two top faces, like that, fill them once, add three loop cuts, move them on the y-axis, do the same for the center one, and I just beveled it to add the number of loops that I needed. So I'm just adding the number of loops that we need to fill this area. Now let's select all of those and do smooth vertices. See if we can fix that corner, but I think it might be a bit harder with that topology.
Now I'll go in edit mode and then press L on the tail just to select it. And then I will separate the selection because I don't want it to be part of the base mesh. Now here I will add, we will add a shrink wrap modifier. Now I will slide the modifier just under subdivision, but above solidify. Now I will rename this mesh to base mesh or guide mesh. This will be the high poly um, object that will not be separated into multiple parts. And I will duplicate it and rename the copy panels or plane. This will be the lower poly version that we will cut into pieces. So on your base mesh, you will need to crank up the subdivision to 4 or 5 if your PC can handle it. But don't worry, we will hide this mesh so it will not impact performance in the end. I will also turn off the visibility for the solidify and weighted normals modifier in both rendered and uh, viewport view. Now I'll just check if everything looks good, if we have any problems. Here it seems fine. So I will select my panels like this and then set the shrink wrap target to base mesh. And now we can hide the base mesh, or at least move it to another collection. So with M on your keyboard, I will type that and disable the collection. That way we don't see it in rendered and in viewport. And if you try to move in vertices now, you can see that they're wrapped onto our base mesh. And so this uh, will make it so, even if we add loop cuts or geometry, we will not deform our mesh. And this will allow us to add a lot of details without um, ruining the surface quality of our mesh. So I hope you understand a bit better um, this technique now, but you'll see it will get clearer the more we do it. Now I will add a vertex group and rename it wrapped parts or something like this and assign all of the vertices to it. And then under the shrink wrap, I'll assign that group. That way we can exclude some vertices so for example, if we remove, like here, you can see that they're assigned to the group, so they cannot um, move outside of the base mesh, basically. They're always projected. But if we remove them, this is what happens. We can move them. Now, we will use this to our advantage to only deform some parts of the mesh for creating, for example, air vents or maybe the truster area or the cockpit. Now I'll move this to backup because I forgot. And now we can even join um, the tail now. So I will slide those vertices to be a bit wider than the base of the tail. And then I will delete the faces under it. Then I'll slide those back like that. And now what we need to do is simply merge them together into two new objects. But first I want to kind of create a protective layer. So maybe we should... Let's not do the tail for now, but I want to separate the wing flaps or the wing rudders, not, not sure what you call them. So I'll move the blueprint aside and just use them as a rough guide instead. And here is the part that I want to do. This whole section. So to fix that, to do that, sorry, we'll add a loop cut 
very close to the end um, because it seems to not go all the way through. And I'll select those faces right here and making sure to not touch um, the part connecting the thruster and uh, yeah, with the fuselage. So I'll select those faces. Maybe we need to actually move those back because there seems to be kind of an angle change. I'll just slide that back and I'll just slide those and then we can separate the mesh. And I'm going to make sure that uh, the bottom vertices and the top ones align um, vertically. That way the faces we create to make the edges will be flat. So I'll just slide those closer just to get a bit more even geometry. But you can see that even if we slide those, the, ge the, the shape doesn't change because we have the base mesh underneath. And this is a really powerful modifier. And here the beveled section will kind of be helpful because it will make this corner sharper just like we wanted. But I'll just make sure the vertices align vertically, like I said here. And then I'll select all of our faces over here and separate selection. Perfect. Now we'll need to, one, tighten the corners and two, um, fill the gap on the sides that we created. So tightening the corner is pretty easy. We can just add a loop cut on this way. And one over here. Perfect. Now let's see what it looks like with this part. Okay, I think we can start uh, filling up the sides. So I'll select the, the plane and then go into local view. Or we can just hide this. But I prefer local view because that way when we come out, um, all of our parts are still there. Okay, so where do we start? Let's start with the easy faces, the one we know where they will be, where, how they will look. So here, I'll start at the end. Actually, let's retopologize the corners first to kind of have a loop that goes all the, at the sides. So I'll delete the corner face on both the top and the bottom. Then we'll do the same for each corners, just like that. And this allow us to add a loop and, and kind of contain where it will be. Perfect. So I'll select our two vertices here, slide them, just move them a bit further apart. That way we can merge at last, like that. And don't forget to do it for the bottom. And we can refill those area. And we'll do the same for the other side. But maybe we can just start filling up and see what it looks like. Now here you may see a bit of glitches because the base, the base mesh doesn't have any faces in this region. 
and since we're telling them to kind of project onto the base mesh, those faces, they don't know where to go. So I'll just fill, finish those corners, and then I'll go back to explaining to you how the base mesh works and what we're going to do to kind of bypass that. So now you, here it's actually looking pretty decent. Now you can see that there are a few little um, abnormalities, but it's not as bad as I would have expected. But to fix that, we'll just need to kind of inset those faces and then remove them from the influence of that shrink wrap group. Now I'll just check if beveling fixes that. Now let's remove all the bevels because, uh, not remove them, sorry, but just set them to be the same uh, bevel weight. Now you can see that our corner is getting a little bit ugly here. And I'm thinking about separating the wing already uh, from the rest of the body. Just that way when we add loops to fix that issue, they're not spreading all over the place. So I'll just hide the loop at the corner here. Or actually, hide the flat section, kind of. And then I'll separate them into this new group. I'll select this loop and then flatten it on the x-axis. Okay, so this was a, a mistake on my side. I want the wing to separate at the junction here, so we'll need to do that. So I'll just rotate them so they meet the fuse lash here. And then this loop can be dissolved. Okay. Now we'll need to select the faces that we want to be separated into the, the wings now. So I'll just do a few tweaks and for now we'll go with the lazy solution of just letting them where they are and later on we'll go and fix that. I'll just deselect those and then move them apart just that way we can kind of continue this, this loop at the end here. So I'll just extrude those vertices at the top like that, and don't forget to move them back on the y-axis. Now, whenever you have glitches like this, sometimes it's just because um, your geometry is um, doesn't know to which face to project. And I'll just fill those faces here. And so, yeah, when it doesn't know where to project itself, it can result in some glitches. So how to fix that, you just move them around until they snap to one. I'll just move that apart, like that. Okay, perfect. Okay, so let's exit local view, and then let's work on this area. I will add a loop cut over here 
to kind of match the corner that we have on the wing. For this, I'll slide it just a bit closer. Because there shouldn't be this huge gap. Right. And I'll just move that around. Perfect. Okay, great. Now we still need to split this into two parts and do the edges. So first, let's finish these edges and make them clean. So I'll select all of the sides faces. Then I will remove them and see what it looks like if we remove them. Now we cannot simply remove them for now. Actually, I'm just trying to bevel and see what it what would happen. See if we can get rid of the glitches. And honestly, it seems to be working better than I expected. Now I anticipated that we would need to inset the faces to kind of create a protective loop that would not be wrapped but the bevel seems to be working just fine so I will use the bevel in this case now that was a very simple and easy solution let's see if we can put it off the same way for the other one now I'll do dissolve this loop and this loop and then slide that back over here because Maybe we can just bevel it to get exactly the same match as the wing. Sometimes loops are more reliable and give you a bit more controls. So that's what I'll do. Okay, let's move over to another part of the plane. I'm starting to be a bit tired of working on the wings. Now let's go to the front of the plane. The, the fuselage will be an easy part. So I go inside view and maybe we can just separate it here, the intake. So I'll add a loop over there, right over that panel line and if we select it we can see where it goes and I'll just flatten it on the y-axis that way it's perfectly flat and now I'll select all of the faces on the left of this line and then separate selection and then I'll just slide those over just a bit to get a bit more space between the two panels now here I'm going to increase the thickness of the solidify modifier just because yeah, for now they are very very thin so I just want to make them a bit bigger so that way when we add the gap it's a bit more visible and then I'll select every other mesh and then select the cockpit at last and then Control L copy modifiers that way they have the same settings now Okay, let's separate the thruster tip. And here it might be a bit uh, more complicated than the rest. Because we need to create a perfectly flat loop and the surface is pretty uneven. So maybe we'll have a harder time to do it. Let's see where they separate it. So right about in the middle, 
I'll just select all of those faces. See what this part would look like if it was separated. Let's not forget those here in the corners. And let's try it out. Let's just separate it into a new mesh. And then I'm going to flatten it on the Y axis. Now we just need to bridge this gap. What we could do is actually just undo what we did and then flatten it but at the top. That way we're going kind of into the fuselage instead of into the other part. And this way we can flatten it as well, here. And then let's move it back. Perfect. Well, not perfect, as you can see. And this is an issue. What we may need to do is select all of the vertices here don't forget these two. Slide them on the y-axis just to make that connection flatter. And then we'll move those vertices as well. Okay, better. But you can see, still not good. So what we may need is... Actually, this may resolve itself once we fill the faces on the side. But let's try adding geometry and see if it helps. I'll just space these out. And add one here to make the corner a bit tighter. And then space them back. So let's create the inside of the thruster. So I'll select the tip, extrude, and then remove that loop from the influence of the shrink wrap, and then we can extrude it inward. Perfect. Now I'll try to make it follow kind of the shape of the fuselage. Then maybe we can bevel the tip here. Perfect. Now you can see I'm checking in rendered view just to, to see how things look and if our panel gaps are too big or too narrow. Now let's move onto the front again. And this is probably the easiest part. We'll just add a loop here if there wasn't slide it in place, and then separate. Just like that. Here I'm adding an edge split modifier and set to mark sharp and then I will mark sharp those edges and actually this is a new method I'm trying so I'm not sure if I'm going to like it and if it's going to work properly but I thought why not give it a shot so when we mark sharp um, for blender it will kind of separate it into two meshes so to speak
and then I'm adding a bevel modifier and I will um, set the angle to something like 80 degrees and you will disable clamp overlap. That way we can make the bevel bigger or smaller. Now let's try again with this one. But you can see with the bevel it splits it into two parts so in this case it's going to be easier to separate it into an entirely new mesh. And let's just remove those edges. And let's try the mark sharp again. And you can see in this case it works quite well. So I think both techniques can coexist. Now this is looking pretty good and I think we can move on to the the top of the plane, the back. So I'll go here, add loop cut just above the tail connection, slide those around and then I'll select the faces where just where they start, they start to round up and then I'll deselect those that I selected by accident, reselect them and okay then we're going to separate it into a new mesh. Perfect. Now I want to create uh, this kind of vent but first I want to split up this part into the numbers of uh, panels that we have. So I'll just add loop here and slide this one over. And I'm going to shear it to get this angle. Perfect. Now here I copied the modifiers of the the tip of the nose just so we can get the edge split modifier and the bevel at the end. So I'll just mark those sharp and see if it works. And yeah, not too bad. This method can really prove itself useful. Now for the slightly bigger challenge, we'll need to create this vent on top. So to do that I'm going to delete the top two faces then I will add a loop cut on this side here actually let's add one in this direction I'll just slide the first loop downward just to space out the geometry a bit more. Here I'll select those three vertices, extrude them once very close and then extrude them once again over there and these vertices will be removed from the shrink wrap influence then I will flatten them a little bit on the z-axis and move them down just to kind of create this downward slope that we want and this one may need to be brought down and brought over to the size here okay now we can see that it still creates this kind of big bump, which is not what we want. To fix that, we'll need to add one loop here and this, and remove this one as well. Perfect.
let's see what would happen if we were to actually let's merge it like this to create this triangle and then remove those loops and let's try that this way so i'll just connect up the end faces like this add a loop on this side and add one here let's remove the triangle instead because we had a few issues let's remove those two faces because they would not be here on the final mesh connect those two and then see if it's better with the quad at the end yeah it's not too bad Now here I will delete that face and delete the triangle, add the loop on the inside, and connect the faces, like that. Now I'll make sure that these are not influenced by the shrink wrap. And we may need to do the same for these. Now you can see what happens here is because of our edge split. I forgot to uncheck the angle. So basically the edge split only affects um, the mark sharp angles, uh, edges, sorry. So here you can see me just struggling to understand the problem because it was a new method, but it's really just the edge split that acts up in this place. And there you go, it fixed it. Much better. But we still have this kind of uh, lump that we don't want. To fix that, we'll need to add a bit more geometry. So let's see if we can just remove it. Yes, but not this one. Because otherwise it would have created this weird formation because we moved the geometry. So I'll just move it, add one loop and move it really close here. And now let's just try to get back our rounded shape. I'll just slide those over. Because once we remove them from the shrink wrap influence, um, the geometry will deform and our surface quality will also. So we need to be really careful about what we remove from the shrink wrap. And if we remove them, to watch out for the surface quality. In this case, I'll just bring them down just a bit and see how it looks. If we add one loop on the inside or the outside. Sometimes one side is better. You can see I'm just trying different configurations, trying to see if something sticks, something works best. Now you can see we still have this kind of flat top, which is not what we want. We don't want that. And don't forget to uncheck. Here I'm going to add the bevel to see if we can fix that issue. Okay. Now let's hide this face, not the rhythm, but just hide them. And then I'll make them show up again and separate it into a new mesh. And those can be deleted now. If we were to have kept them into a single mesh, um, it would have created some artifacts because the faces would have, because of subdivision surface basically. But here, it's pretty good. Maybe we'll, we'll need to change the curvature a bit, see if we can...
fix this issue with only two loops. So I'll just move this one up, move this one up, and then on the x-axis. And move this one just a little bit down, this one up. Pretty good. Now, I'm still not a big fan of these separation. Let's see if we can increase the bevel size to kind of make them more visible. Now let's move on to the side, well, the underside of the plane to kind of create this trap at the bottom. I'm not sure if it's the ammunition, a uh, weapon trap or something. But in any case, let's do that. So this one will be pretty straightforward. We just need to add one loop in the right place and that's what we're gonna do. So I'll add one loop and then press G twice and then E to align it to one side, in this case the left one. Perfect. And then we'll need to add the loop on the horizontal side as well because you can see that our two faces are not going up enough. So I'll add a loop right here. Perfect. And you can see that it didn't deform the rest of the plane because we're using a base mesh. So I'll select all of those faces and then separate them into a new mesh. Here I'm kind of estating um, whether I want to use the edge split or not, but let's just go with separating it. So the only thing we have to do now is to tighten the corners and we only need it to, we only need to do it on the fuselage. So I'll delete this face here and add a single vertex there to kind of create this triangle and see if it can help us to tighten that. Then I will delete this loop here at the corner. That way I can add loops that will run straight instead of curve. And then do a merge at last and recreate this face. Then dissolve this face instead of deleting it. That way we keep the edge to add one face, well, one vertex that we can then use to create a triangle. And on the other side, it will be exactly the same. So one loop here to kind of contain the triangle. Actually here, we may just be able to kind of dissolve the faces. Oops, dissolve. Add one vertex, slide it really close and create two new faces. Just like that, perfect. And that will be it um, for this episode. I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.